And hello YouTube, this is GS, my name is Smart, and I'm going to another brand new video for Tutorials with GS. Today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at Premiere Pro and how to create a professional looking title sequence where we have text appear and then we have it being underlined like we see in several movies. To show you an example of what this looks like, I have it already created right here and then I'll be guiding you through the steps. So let's take a look at this right here. This is actually a uh, video I already have uploaded on my gaming channel. This is a neat little series I started, but as we see, the title fades in, and then we have this underline right here that makes it look really, you know, I guess sort of professional. I like it a lot. So this is actually an effect that Premiere Pro does not offer. You have to create it on your own. So that's sort of why I'm creating the tutorial, because for those of you who are looking for something like this to create this title uh, animation, um, you have to create it from scratch. So the way we're going to do this is, let me go ahead and go into the sequence right here. Let me uh, delete this because I already have it made. And uh, basically, we have our footage right here. Don't worry about too much about, you know, all this stuff right now. If you're new to Premiere Pro, a lot of this can be uh, confusing and sort of a, a lot to handle. For now, just worry about, uh, you have a piece of footage right here, right? That's all you need to worry about. You have a piece of footage imported onto your timeline here, and you want to add a... Uh, a text animation that makes the text appear and then that also does the underlining thing So how you have to do this is you actually have to have uh, two image files I'm using I'm using two image files to do this. I thought it's a lot easier to do it this way So I'm doing it like that and the way I did it I actually went ahead and made one image the text and another image I made the horizontal line and the way you should do this is you should probably go ahead and uh, full screen your actual video here and the way you can do that is by holding down control or I think Yeah, holding down control and then hitting the tilde key, which is a little squiggly line It should be right underneath your escape button and when you do that it becomes full screen What you want to do then is go ahead and hit the print screen button that should be somewhere near the top of your keyboard above the uh, backspace button or somewhere after the F10 button around there. It's P-R-N-T-S-C-R -S or something like that. You hit that button and it takes a screenshot of your screen. After that, we wanna go ahead and drop our screenshot into a image editing program. You can use Photoshop. Um, however, I'm gonna assume you don't have Photoshop, so we're gonna be using a free software that I use very often, which is called GIMP. So that works just fine. And then you're going to go ahead and press Control v to paste the screenshot into the image editing software. Now from here on, what we want to do is create our title. So for me, whatever title you want to use, go ahead and use the text tool right here on the left side. It's a little A. And um, you know, just make sure we're going to use our proper color. I'm going to use white. You can use whatever you want. And our title sequence is just going to be... I don't know, let's just name it YouTube Animations. After that, we're gonna go ahead and press Control A to highlight everything. And then we're gonna pick a relatively good size with this little dialog box right here, perhaps 50. Uh, let's tad bigger, let's do 75. All right, 75. Now you'll notice that um, if you wanna center this this piece of text, what you'll have to do is grab this tool right here, uh, which is called the alignment tool, and then go ahead and click your text layer here, and then just go ahead and center it with this button right here that centers it. If you want to move it more up or more down, you can do so. Um, if you want it directly in the center, you can just use the alignment tool and uh, select this one right here, and this will make it exactly in the center. However, I don't want it exactly in the center. I want it sort of a little bit above. And um, after that, we're gonna add our horizontal line. So for this part, I sort of like to zoom in a little bit just so I can get an idea. And from here, you wanna go ahead and grab the pencil tool. The pencil tool will, will, will do just fine. There are several ways of doing this. However, the pencil tool is probably the, the simplest and quickest way to do this. And uh, just sort of create a new layer, which is right down at the bottom here. Create a new layer underneath your layer panel. And everything here is fine. Just leave it exactly the same. Make sure it's transparent. Click OK. 
and you'll see that the uh, layer is now on top of the text layer. Go ahead and move that layer below the text layer like so. Go ahead and use your pencil tool and just sort of draw a line. You'll see that's sort of too thick. We want to go ahead and decrease this thickness and this will be how thick our line will be. So to decrease the thickness, just change the size right here. So control Z to undo that. And we're going to pick size 5 pixel maybe. And that looks pretty good, I guess. You could go thinner if you'd like. I'm probably going to go 3. Like so. Yeah. I'm going to use 3. You could use whatever thickness you'd like, though. And then from here, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and um, sort of start from the left side of the text and just click once, then hold down shift and hold down control and move and move the uh, line all the way to the end where you want it to stop, like so. After that, go ahead and grab the move tool. I want to grab our horizontal line like so. And we're just going to move it up a little bit. And just position it to how you want it to be. Now, if you notice that your line is a little too long, perhaps, you can always erase some of it. You can always redo it. Or you can always scale it by right-clicking the layer. Click Scale Layer. And actually, we want to have it visible. So use the tool right here. Uh, where is it? The Scale tool right here. And just click it. And then you can actually... Uh, change this by moving it left and right and you'll see that it can become smaller or shorter But for the most part you I mean you don't want to do that because it'll change the pixels uh, You sort of want to make your line uh, Right the first time so if it's too long or too short just control Z to undo it and then uh, redraw it But this is fine for now. Um, I think this is fine So after that what we want to do is delete our background layer we only use the screenshot to get the proper uh, dimensions here. So go ahead and uh, delete this background layer. And we'll now have the title here and we have the horizontal line. Now be aware, um, the reason why we took a screenshot, and I probably should have mentioned this uh, before, but the reason why I took a screenshot of this is because uh, this, this piece of footage is in 1080p. It's 1920 by 1080. So the resolution of this is uh, 1920 pixels wide and uh, 1080 pixels high. Now I know that my screen is in an aspect ratio that fits 1920 by 1080. Uh, most screens fit in the aspect ratio of 1920 by 1080 if you're 1366 by 768, if you're 1280 by 720. Um, you know, most of those are aspect ratios of 1920 by 1080. However, the goal is if you don't have, if you have like a desktop monitor that's like uh, 1064 by 640 or something like, like, a, like a, a weird 4x3. If you have a 4x3 monitor instead of a 16x9 monitor, um, and if, if, you, if you're just not sure, then try to find out your dimension for your video. It should tell you what dimension your video is in. If you right click on your video file and click properties, it should say the size. But try taking a screenshot first. It should work. But anyway, yeah, that's something you just have to sort of play around with if you're having trouble with dimensions. Um, hopefully, though, if you're using Premiere Pro, you know about dimensions and you know what dimension you're working in. I assume you know what dimension you're working in. Um, otherwise, this tutorial may be a little too advanced for you. But um, anyway, that's why we took a screenshot because I know that my screen is in an aspect ratio that's 1920 by 1080. So anyway, let's go back to this. We have our two layers here. We have our horizontal line and we have our text layer. What we want to do is save these two as separate. So we want to save our text first and then we want to save our horizontal line. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide these two layers like so. You can hide them by clicking the eyeball here and only make the text layer visible. Then we're going to go to File, Export, uh, go to my desktop, and I'm just going to name this Text. and click OK and that's been exported now. Now I'm going to go and hide the text layer and show the horizontal line layer. And same thing, export. I'm going to name this horizontal line or HL. 
Now you can save it as a PNG or a JPEG. I like to save my stuff as PNGs. Once you have that, then you can go ahead and close out of GIMP. Now once we're back here, what we want to do is drag our horizontal line and our uh, text into the uh, this little window right here. So we're going to go to our desktop and grab these two, like so. And then drag them into here. Now we have our text and we have our horizontal line. Now what you want to do is go ahead and grab your first text. And actually, uh, a note on that, apologies, when you're saving your image, you want to save as a PNG, not as a JPEG, not as a JPG, not as a JPEG, you want to save as a .png. The reason why is because you want to have a transparent background. The point of this is because if we have a transparent background, you'll see that our text can easily fit on, um, on the screen here without having a white background. If you save it as a JPEG, you're going to have a white background of your text and it's going to be all white. So please be aware, please make sure you are saving your images as .pngs. Now here you'll notice, um, if, if you see that your text is a little off, what I always like to do is right click um, the thing and click scale to frame size. And this is what I was saying that if you have a monitor that is in the aspect ratio of 1920 by 1080 or whatever resolution you're working in, if you're working in the same resolution as your monitor, then you should be okay. But if you see that it looks weird, just right click it and click scale to frame size and that will automatically adjust it. So we have our title right now here, um, but we still wanna add, we wanna, we wanna make it appear. So we wanna add just an easy, very simple uh, dissolve effect so that it appears. That's very easily done by going to effects here and just typing in dissolve. And you can use an additive dissolve or you can use a cross dissolve. I'm going to be using a cross dissolve. So just drag the effect onto the beginning of this text. And you'll see that it basically fades in. We want to do the same thing when it's exiting. We want it to fade out. So cross dissolve, drag it onto here. And it fades out. So now that we have that, we want to go ahead and move this to the top because underneath here we want to have our horizontal line. So grab our horizontal line and drag it underneath our uh, text layer here. And once again, we want to do uh, right click, scale to frame size. And you'll see that the, the, uh, the horizontal line is now underneath our text, just like it was in the original image when we designed it. Now, so far, nothing is happening. As we uh, watch this, you'll see that the horizontal line just comes in. Nothing, there's no, like, it, it, it doesn't underline the text. So the way you can uh, make it underline the text is by going to effects. And if we wanted to start underlining um, from the middle, which is what I did, you want to type in curtain. And the curtain effect here will basically, if you drag it onto the, if you drag it onto the horizontal line here, if you go ahead and drag the curtain effect here onto the start of your a horizontal line here, what you'll see is that it gets underlined. Now, if it's a little too fast to you, you can uh, zoom in by holding down the Alt key and then using your scroll wheel. And you can just go ahead and lengthen and uh, make this longer here so it goes, sh so it goes slower. Like so. And depending on when you want this to come in, as we see, text appears, gets underlined, and if you want it to disappear with the with the text, we're gonna go ahead and grab your razor tool here and just trim off the end here. Delete that. And we're gonna use another cross dissolve. Cross dissolve, drag it to the end here, and when we play it, everything fades out together. Now, if you don't want the underlying to start from the middle, if you want it to start from you know one of the sides, the left side or the right side, instead of using the curtain effect, you're actually going to be using the wipe effect. And you wanna use the linear wipe. Once again, you drag it. And when you have it dragged onto the, onto the, um, on the horizontal line, 
what you want to do is animate with keyframes the uh, wipe animation. So here you'll see the the transition completion and here we have the angle. Basically find the spot where you want it to start coming in. So we obviously want it to start at the very beginning like so. And if you want, you can zoom in to be 100% accurate. So right at the very beginning, we want our transition to be at 100. So we're going to click our keyframe here, the little stopwatch here. And then as we move towards the end, when do we want this to be completed? We want it to be completed right around here, perhaps. And we move this all the way down to zero. And that will create another keyframe. As you see, here are our keyframes. Here's our start keyframe. Here's our end keyframe. And now when we were to zoom out here, and if we watch this, as you see, it starts from the right and goes to the left. Now, if you wanted to start from the left side and go to the right side, you'd have to go and change the angle here instead of 90 degrees to negative 90 degrees. Now, if we go ahead and watch from the beginning, it actually starts from left and goes to right. From there on, you just need to add another cross dissolve to the end. And if we watch it, everything fades out just like that. So that's sort of the neat little uh, title animation there that you sort of have to like sort of work on. Um, you know, there's no, once again, there's no actual preset animation that does it like that. You sort of have to play around with the tools that Premiere Pro gives you. But if you use it like that, you can make some really cool uh, professional looking titles, I guess. I mean, for me, it worked very well with this sort of video I was doing. This is sort of a little a storytelling series that I'm doing in Guild Wars 2. So I thought it was very appropriate to have this sort of title sequence here animation that would really fit to the video. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. There's plenty of other things you can do with all these little tools that Premiere Pro gives you. And as I find more ways to use them, as I use them in my own productions, I'll definitely be sharing them with you. If you want to know how to create these widescreen bars that I have in the video right now as well, this is another thing that you have to do. You have to create the widescreen bars on your own. There is no preset for that. If you want to learn how to do that, I have a video on that as well on my channel. Go and check that out. There should be a link in the description, some annotations on screen, as well as a card. You can check it out there. And that'll be for this video. Any questions, comments, video requests, feedback, anything you want to say, leave in the comments section below. I usually reply to all the comments. And that'll be for this video. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well, and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours, depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how-to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too. Really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels in social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.